Hi everyone, I'm Pete Carmichael, the director of the Savoy Institute here at Gettysburg College, and it's my pleasure to welcome Christian Keller. Uh, Christian is a professor of history at the U.S. War College up in Carlisle. He's also going to be with us again uh, this summer. He will be leading a staff ride down to Chancellorsville, but I have just had a delightful time with Christian and our students in my Gettysburg and Civil War memory class. We spent about 40 minutes on the battlefield uh, talking and discussing about the 11th Corps. So, you know, could you tell our audiences a little bit about what we did today and then we'll talk a little bit about uh, the conference later in June. Thanks, Pete. Well, today we took Pete's class uh, on history and memory at Gettysburg through the 11th Corps lines, uh, starting up at, uh, at Oak Hill to give him the panorama and the view of what was happening down here, where the 11th Corps fought on the plains of Gettysburg. We're here at Barlow's Knoll, where, of course, Barlow's division was deployed, and uh, which uh, precipitated a series of events that ended up in the retreat of the 11th Corps on the first day. We talked a lot about what actually happened versus how it was remembered, and how exactly the German memory differed with the Anglo-American memory, and what the pragmatic implications of that uh, uh, might have been for uh, assimilation of, of ethnics into the Union and also for how uh, uh, President Lincoln uh, may have uh, uh, dealt with the election in 64. One of the things that um, historians agree upon is that looking at the experience of United States colored troops, that, that killing made the man, right? that uh, shouldering a musket for the Union, fighting against the Confederates, that that was a way for an African-American soldier uh, to get, make that claim of citizenship. But what's your take now for German-American soldiers? Did the fighting here at, at Gettysburg and then preceding us at Chancellorsville, how did that instill a sense of Americanism or did it have you know, an unintended consequence? It's a great question, Pete. And uh, as I write in my books, this is actually a major question that we need to wrestle with. Uh, we see the trend throughout American history and the Civil War is in many ways a microcosm of this issue of assimilation and especially assimilation during times of war. German Americans of the North did not find the American Civil War an acculturating experience in large part because of how they were portrayed in the Anglo-American press after Chancellorsville and then after Gettysburg by their Anglo-American colleagues in the first and even in the 11th Corps itself. So tell us a little bit about, about Barlow. I mean, a lot of the animosity, we always focus on the rank and file of the Army of the Potomac and that nativism is what came out so forcefully. But Barlow's the man whose monument is just behind us. Uh, what's Barlow's relationship like with his with his troops here? Well, they called him Dogberry to start. Uh, that and says it all. He was not very well liked. He didn't like them. Uh, he called them damn Dutch. He said they wouldn't fight, and they ran at the first shot, uh, complaining to Harvard classmates and such. And uh, Barlow had a bit of an issue, but is representative, I would argue, of a lot of Anglo-American officers at the higher level. We need to understand from the perspective and context of the 1860s that nativism was, was an omnipresent force in American society, and it seems strange to us today, but it was very potent back then, and a lot of these officers at higher rank had these prejudices as they went into the war, and it was hard for them to get rid of them. So you mentioned Chancellorsville and the, um, the response uh, to the 11th Corps breaking down, which I think historians have explained it wasn't the fault of the men, they simply were in a faulty position. You're going to take uh, some of the CWI audience down to Chancellorsville, and you're going to do something called a staff ride. That's right. And you have done this for us for a number of years now. I think some people who are watching this are not going to know what a staff ride is. Could you tell them about that and, and what you're going to do down at Chancellorsville? Well, a, a staff ride is, is more than just a tour. Uh, in uh, the armed forces of the United States, a staff ride is a, a special tour that is uh, created for the benefit of military officers so that they can take away insights that have value for their work within the armed forces today. And uh, this can go anywhere from the senior level down to the junior level in, in, in the officer corps. Um, we will focus at Chancellorsville on the points in the battle where key decisions were made by officers at all levels, but primarily at the senior level, that had a great effect on how the campaign uh, uh, was finished and, and the results of it, and then make relations to that decision making, from that decision making, to uh, events that are happening right now. So in some ways we connect the past to the present using careful insights that the past can offer 
the present. And uh, Chancellorsville is a wonderful battleground to do this with. Well, I, I can say the Christian staff rides, they fill up extremely they, quickly. Right? They're always sold out, and uh, I'm sure that will be the case this year as well. We're so appreciative of taking time with our students here at Gettysburg College. They really enjoyed it, and looking forward to seeing you.